So I got an email asking me if I'd be willing to fix uh, a subscriber's broken Ryzen CPU where some pins got smashed. And I thought to myself, rather than do it for them, I figured why not actually show them how to do it themselves. With the, with the rise, the rise of Ryzen CPUs this year and how many of them were sold, and the fact that this applies to all the backwards compatible AMD CPUs that have pins on them, like um, the FX CPUs and the Athlon CPUs, I figured this is a topic that's probably worth covering. For a limited time, buy a select EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti or GTX 1080 graphics card or laptop and get a free copy of Destiny 2 for PC. Help save humanity's last safe city by following the link in the description below. So what I have right here is my running and working Ryzen 1700X CPU. It's one we've been using when we do our Ryzen benchmarks. And uh, you know what, I figured, I'm so confident in this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to damage this CPU. I'm going to intentionally hurt it. So I'm gonna drop it on the pins, kind of reminiscent of what might be a typical issue out there. Someone's holding it and they drop it. And these pins are fairly fragile. They'll kind of smash over. And showing you that it's working right now, I'm going, I uh, hit restart, oops. Now it's probably gonna trigger an update. But I'm gonna show you guys the way that I do this. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can do this or even some specialized tools out there that people have come up with to fix this. But I'm gonna show you the way I do it with minimal to no budget whatsoever. Now this isn't the first time anyone's done something like this, so I don't claim to be first or original at repairing a CPU. In fact, Linus did a video showing how you can repair the motherboard pins on an Intel socket, which is much more delicate and much more difficult. But uh, we're gonna do it today with AMD because I think this is the easiest thing out there and some people really freak out when this happens and it, you really don't have to. But we need to talk about what tools you need. Now the only three things you need to get this done, at least using my method, is the CPU and the motherboard. Admittedly, you should have both already if you have a damaged CPU and a razor blade. Now I've heard people using like tiny needle nose pliers and micro, you know, magnifying glasses and stuff. It's not the way I do it. I'm of the mindset that I like to do things as simple as possible with the least amount of trouble as possible. And this one's designed to be fixed in a manner of which is readily available. And if you don't have a razor blade, you can run down to, you know, the corner store, get one pack of razor blades from Home Depot or whatever are going to be very, very cheap. But you know what we have to do first? We have to hurt this guy. I mean, this is a $300 CPU. This is not like, <laughs> this is not some cheap, like I could go grab the FX CPU and I could totally show you how to do it on an old FX CPU that would like, if it went Ari. And if it didn't work, I wouldn't be out, you know, a $300 CPU. But this is, how, what does it say about a guy if he's not willing to put his own stuff on the line to uh, stand by his methods, right? So here we are, right here with a perfectly good Ryzen 1700X CPU. The way I see this typically happening is, guys are like holding their CPU and they're like, ah, and then they drop it. And it doesn't take much to bend these pins. I mean, look, these, these pins are, they're not even a millimeter thick. I mean, what are these, probably half mil at best. And there's a lot of them, obviously. So, you know what we gotta do? So apparently I'm a better dropper than I thought because after like the first three drops, I couldn't get anything to happen. Like it, cause it kept hitting the corner, which is fairly protective, right? The pins are somewhat recessed. Uh, but then uh, on the fourth drop, they bent a little bit. And then finally I decided to just take a pen and take measures into my own hands. One of the ways I've seen these get bent though, is if people put them in the plastic sleeve, like to ship used or something to someone who bought it online. And then they don't put it in the right way. Believe it or not, there's an orientation, a top and a bottom. And when they snap it closed, it bends in all the corners of the pins. So what I did with the pen was I just sort of smashed into one of the corners. And I think it did a pretty good job of making it look like the picture that was sent to me 
for asking whether or not I could actually, you know, fix this for them. Now this is pretty repairable in my opinion. I mean, some of them are pretty smashed. The hard part here is gonna be straightening them back out without breaking. If a pin breaks off, you can technically fix it if you have the right equipment. It's a tiny, tiny little solder. Uh, it's just a lot more work. I mean, at this point, I wouldn't even attempt it because I don't have the right equipment to do it. So let's go ahead and see if we can't fix this because obviously this ain't gonna work like this. What I typically will do with the razor blade is I'll just sort of take it and I'll kind of put it in between each row here to make sure that everything is kind of straight. So I'll take it here, I'll start in the end and then I'll just sort of like weave it in between and then just kind of rock a little bit, right? So I'm making sure that the other parts of the chip right now are good. And this part's gonna be a little bit tedious. You're gonna have to have some patience. I mean, at this point, you're trying to save yourself hundreds of dollars. So you don't wanna rush this. Technically, you can't make it worse unless you break the pins, but if it's not working now and then it doesn't work later, you're kind of in the same boat, right? So this side of the CPU is pretty good. It seems like through all those drops, nothing really happened on this end. The very first row, though, has a little bit of resistance, so that's why I just kind of wiggled it like that. And I'm sort of using this as a spreader, if you will. I'm using the razor blade to just go through the pins. make It's straight, so it keeps everything nice and straight. This is where the hard part's gonna be though. The first thing we're gonna wanna do though is kinda start on the end and just sort of pry back these pins. And this is actually very difficult with the lighting I have in here, my goodness, because it's reflections everywhere. But we just wanna bring the pins back to straight. We don't wanna force them too hard. We just wanna sort of work it slowly. And that's what I'm gonna be doing at this point. So what I'm gonna do now is we're just gonna sort of time lapse this because I really need to take my time. Like right here, there's some that's bent on this corner. So I'm gonna rotate it 180. We're just gonna go this way and make sure that everything is straight on this end. Otherwise, if they're not straight this way, I can't go that way, if that makes sense. So we're sort of just like hashtagging this left and right as we go. A terrible analogy, but you know, I think you get what I meant. So what I'm doing right here now is I've gotten these basically upright. I've got to make sure they're all straight. So they're all kind of smashed a little bit different direction. Like when it got smashed in on the corner, some went right, some went left, some went back. So I'm just slowly trying to get them facing generally in the upward direction so that I can then start to deal with getting them facing straight. And the rocking back and forth motion of the razor blade like this, when I switch angles, is just making sure that everything stays in its own row, because I don't want one to accidentally make, you know, get flattened out and be interfering with the row next to it, because that's gonna be a problem. So I basically got it now so that when I look down long ways on this axis, we're actually looking pretty good. Like I don't see any pins leaning over into the row they're not supposed to. But when I look down this axis, I don't know if you're gonna be able to even see that, there's still quite a few facing that way. The other thing you have to be careful of too is while you're doing this, make sure you, you know while you're holding it down, you're not smashing pins elsewhere. Like I started to smash down this corner with my thumb. I mean, ideally doing this maybe in some kind of a vise would help, but then you can't run the razor blade along it nearly as easy. See like this pin on the end right here is like curved. That's a problem because I think we might have just broke a pin off, but we'll see what happens. So you can see right here, I don't know if you can see that. We technically lost a pin because that one got smashed really good. Now I'm still gonna test this CPU though because believe it or not, there have been instances where pins have broken off and there was no adverse effects whatsoever. I personally don't have the tools to do it but I'm still gonna see if the CPU works because I have heard of plenty of instances where there are pins on here that don't do squat. Now we've got them all pretty much lined up but we're not done yet because if they're not perfectly straight, 
then they might have a problem going into the socket. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take the motherboard and I'm gonna try and put it in the motherboard. Because what happens with the motherboard here is when you turn this like that, you can see the whole top part slides. And if you get the CPU in, like if you get these straightened up enough to where you get the CPU in, you can work this back and forth. That will also help you to straighten out your pins. Yeah, she got in there. So I went in there on the first try. There's been times where I'm way off. So now I'm just kind of working this back and forth and I can actually feel a little bit more pressure when I do that. But now that it's in there, I'm just gonna kind of wiggle it. I'll do the same thing here, just sort of wiggle it around. See, now it went down a little farther because it wasn't quite in all the way. Yeah, see that's just going in there without without any effort now. All right, so we gotta test it now. And I've seen instances where one pin like that, no post, because it's a, an important pin. I've seen where a busted pin like that can cause, it's kind of a lot of thermal paste. I've seen a, an instance where a pin like that can cause a memory channel to go bad or no problems whatsoever. So I'm gonna guess, kind of take the chance here and see what happens. Because at this point, it's from the perspective of, I've got a CPU that doesn't work anyway now we're trying to salvage it and see what happens. It's unfortunate though. I mean, the, the very first pin is usually the one that will break because it got smashed the most. I guess we'll see. I might've just cost myself 300 bucks, but it's worth it to do these videos, quite honestly. All right, moment of truth. So we're going through our post codes. Looks like we've made it past all the CPU codes. Yep, we're in GPU, we got posts. If we go into BIOS, you can see our frequency right there running at 3.4, that's factory. Oh, come back. Uh, we've got our 16 gigabytes of memory showing right there. Voltage is good and all of that. So that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get Windows boots. You know, the thing with the pins is this. AMD likes to remain as forward compatible as possible. So all those pins may not even be in use. That may be a dummy pin. That may not go to anything. It doesn't mean it won't go to something in the future. Who knows? I mean, FX was kind of sort of the same way. This is why you can hear about pins breaking off and there was no adverse effect. I mean, the pin is still sitting. Well, the pin has gone off to a better place. So, what the <laughs> anyway, all 16 gigabytes are showing right there. We've got our reserved memory for our hardware. We're running at 2133 because it was all stock speed. And uh, if we look at our, whoops, look at our CPU, all our cores are present. Everything is running normally as it should. All our cache is showing. So yeah, there you go, guys. As long as you uh, take your time and have some patience, you can actually fix it. And I all I did, all I used to do it was a razor blade and the motherboard. But hey, it's working. We fixed it and uh, I don't have to spend another 300 bucks to replace it. It's the only 1700X I have. The other one was given away. So with that said, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any other suggestions on how to repair or how to fix videos, Send them to my inbox or send them to Twitter, or wherever. It's obvious that I listen to these. So for you that sent me that email, I'm not gonna put your name out there. I don't know if you want me to, but here you go. Here's what I would have done. And as you can see, it's working. And it looked an awful lot like yours in the pictures that you sent me. So give it a shot and let me know how it works out. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.